the management welcome sir what makes this webinar special is the host of distinguished speakers who will be with us this morning we will have mr karsi vishwanath he is not new to us he's been with us he's a very senior consultant previously worked with quest life sciences we will also have with us mr srinivasan murugesan who is a quality operation manager from arcon in malaysia and tomorrow we will have two other distinguished speakers dr mohan kandasamy ramaswamy from university of waterloo canada and dr k m noorulam who we are so delighted happens to be our alumnus from rc university in ethiopia as the title suggests advanced scientific knowledge in times of pandemic yes this gaining of knowledge seems to be the silver lining to the otherwise dark clouds which are gathering all over globally with this covid pandemic so we hope that this webinar will lead to advancing our knowledge among all our delegates our students students from other colleges we have more than 600 delegates who are gathered here this day and last but not the least all this would not have been possible without our staff i have to mention here dr ubaidullah who was fine in starting this webinar series in our uh, college we have more planned in the coming weeks we are planning every friday a webinar series he was the one who technologically started all this and uh, relying it on the youtube also along with his team we have uh, mr vijay kumar dr priyanka sinha and for this today's webinar we also thank and uh, appreciate dr uh, ram lakshmi for having come forward to do this on behalf of the department of pharmaceutical chemistry so welcome to one and all and and on this occasion i request our secretary and correspondent mr uday mehta to kindly address all the delegates sir over to you hello good morning to all good morning Yeah, good morning. Good morning, sir. Voice is clear. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Voice uh, is clear. Yes, clear. Yeah. Happy morning to all. Happy morning to all. Uh, welcome all the speakers to this webinar. <clears throat> the organizing staff, principal, and all the participants who have participated in this webinar, and I hope that this webinar would be a useful one to all the participants, and they would. uh gain further knowledge and i hope that this is a successful one and uh, wish many more such webinars to be conducted by our college uh, people thanks to all please continue thank you sir thank, thank you, you for your uh, thank you for gracing the occasion with your presence sir before going to the session i request all the participants to mute your audio all the participants if you have queries you can type in the chat box it will be clarified at the end of the session so let us start the first session the speaker for the first session is dr k k vishwanath it gives me immense pleasure in introducing dr k k vishwanathan sir he is working as a senior quality consultant in quality assurance and systems in rosari biotech private limited silvasa He has more than 25 years of pharmaceutical quality assurance experience as a senior scientist in parenterals and non-parenterals. He did his post graduation in organic chemistry from Government College of Science and Technology, Raipur. He had also obtained a management diploma from IIM Ahmedabad. He had worked for 14 years in Godrej as GM and head of quality assurance. dealing with fmcg products he had faced all the top audits of regulatory bodies like us fda mhra uk amvasa brazil and who he has also qualified six sigma black belt from ssa mumbai he is the lead auditor for qms 
he has a strong knowledge in gap analysis quality systems risk analysis fmea and lean sigma we are really privileged to have such an eminent personality for today's webinar thank you sir for accepting our invitation we are eager to hear your session thank you again thank you so much thank you uh, mehta ji thank you uh, uh, respected uh, principal dr grace madam thanks to the organizing members and thanks to the faculty members and most important is our dear students well i being the first on the roll call uh, to give a speech uh, i'll make this session very lively i'll try my best to make it very lively Uh, very crisp and uh, uh, make it very useful also well <clears throat> the the topic uh, is something you know uh, good manufacturing practices and risk management right here we go <clears throat> so basically if you look at it the good manufacturing practices or they are themselves impeccable what do you call standards why do we need a risk management for that well today uh, qms is quality management system there is only one qms in the whole world the international standard iso 9001 2050 now that standard has changed if you can google out what is the latest change in iso 9001 2050 he says the standard says they want to go for risk based thinking what is it when they have got extremely uh, uh, very good standards absolutely validated standards why should they go for risk based thinking going forward mhra uk a very powerful regulatory body extremely difficult to get approval from mhra they want risk management to be conducted us fda gmp they want risk management to be conducted what is this all going on when there are such good standards now uh, what is basically a risk forget about it what is hitting the headlines today hydroxychloroquine has been put on hold but who why yes they did a risk evaluation us fda backed it taken a decision that we should put on hold hydroxychloroquine and it till further use for the treatment of the corona or covid-19 now <clears throat> what exactly before we start i'll just give you a small see i want to make the session very lively and interesting so that you know it should not be the first session should be very lively now uh, i give you three uh, very good uh, incidents the incident number 1 very interesting please listen to it uh it's a gmp certified company and the us fda inspectors or mhra inspectors audit inspectors the world renowned inspectors they get inside uh they look they ask they go in through the batch manufacturing records and they say we would like to uh see your uh, records of the sterile area where the injections are made but they got the sterile area records uh they they went through the microbiological count everything was fine it was indicating as uh, zero bacteria zero colonies fine the inspector had nothing to say he said who is the microbiologist who did this because it's very important to maintain sterile area so the, the, immediately the microbiologist's name was there and they said i would like to see i would like to see the training file of this microbiologist and i want to see whether he's really capable of doing it they got the training file the training file was verified yes uh, the training file very well indicated that he was experienced now now comes the point they said when was this done the date was uh, shown to the inspector he said i want to see whether there was a biometry whether there was a fingerprint on the day when the microbiologist entered they they went into the two years uh, uh, the retrospectively they trace back and they found that there was no fingerprint impression of this man of this microbiologist there was no fingerprint impression so that led to a suspicion that they are doing manipulation 
they lost their approval. Incident number two, I'm just giving an example that with all these standards in place, why are we going for risk management? Number two, the incident number two, the inspectors, international inspectors, they get into a tablet manufacturing company. <clears throat> See, a fully GMP certified company, maybe WHO certified also. They get inside, they just go and uh, audit the records, the batch manufacturing records and all. I don't know why these uh, inspectors, instead of coming into the production line, they go into the maintenance. They ask the maintenance people, I would like to see for the last uh, one or two years, uh, what are the breakdowns which have happened in the machinery? So they were just going through the records. Then they asked them, what do you do? Uh, the management, the maintenance people said, so whenever there is a breakdown, uh, they send us a small invoice and uh, we go and attend the breakdown. And that's it. And then once it gets rectified, then we hand over the machine for production. Right? Fine. They went, when they were going through the records, they found on a particular day, the tablet mixing machine, the mixing machine, that is when they had all the ingredients and the mixing is done, that machine was not working and it was handed to maintenance, uh, informing that the machine is under breakdown. Now, the maintenance people, they came and they took charge of the machine. And uh, of course, the things they later on, they would have, what they, were, what they would have done, we do not know. But very cleverly, the inspectors, what they did, they referred to the batch manufacturing records. And they found on that day, tablet mixing was done. How the hell it can happen when the batch, the tablet mixing machine of the same code number, of the same code number, which was used, which was which was handed over for breakdown, how could this mixer be used for a regular processing? Now they are too. The inspector said, they got the archive sample. They said they wanted to recall all the batches made by that because in a defective mixer, how can you expect uniform mixing? I'm trying to just tell the risk in the first incident. You remember there was a risk. It was all there. It, GMP certified company, but they could not. The the the, 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 the second incident, the maintenance, they were just telling that yes, sir, it was taken for maintenance. But then when it was taken for maintenance, how how was it used for the production? How was it used for mixing? No answer. The third incident. Uh, <clears throat> were just going to the manufacturing record they found they asked the quality assurance quality control people to show the records this they found conference that. will now be recorded on on, on they, they were just trying to uh, go through the manufacturing records and and, and the samples what the the quality people have tested they found that on a day one particular important raw material was rejected right now the inspectors they said that okay this has been rejected good I want to see what did you do with this rejected batch? What does the, what does the standard say? A rejected batch has to be immediately, it is always kept on quarantine, it is sent back. It is sent back to the supplier. You cannot have a rejected batch in a manufacturing facility. It's, it's, it's very dangerous. It might get contaminated. The inspector was going on asking, what happened? What happened? Where is the rejected batch? Where did you keep it? He said, we have sent it back. Where is the proof? Where is the evidence? No evidence. What has happened to that? Did you use it by mistake? No, they are not able to answer because this was done about two years back. Again, a risk. The company, it amounted to saying that this company uses human rejected materials for batch processing. So all I'm trying to say that before we go for the presentation, these three incidents are from an organization which is GMP certified. That is the reason all these standards, all these regulatory authorities, regulatory bodies, they want risk assessed, risk based thinking to be started in all in all the sectors, but particularly in the pharmaceutical sector. Now we start with the presentation. Uh, just very, very quickly. What is quality? It is nothing but a degree. 
uh, a set of inherent characteristics which fulfills the requirement of the user. Nothing else. Qualities. Nothing else. You have to just fulfill the requirement of the user. That's it. And then, what do you mean by degree? Degree refers to a level to which a product or a service satisfies. Now, when can you say that a product is excellent or good? It depends upon the level of satisfaction. If the user says, I am fine, I get a relief. When I take this tablet, I get an immediate relief. It is excellent. And if he says no use, it is of no use, then he says it's of poor quality. So it all, it is based on the customer satisfaction. Now, what are the inherent characteristics? There are many. Each Now, for us, for pharmaceutical sectors, it is the curative effect it is the therapeutic effect. It is the relief. Chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine did not give any relief. It did not give any curative effect. It was, did not give any therapeutic effect. Therefore, it was put on hold. Yes, the WHO did the right job, backed by US FDA. Now, when, when we talk about risk, let us talk about some department which does a proactive job, which is quality assurance. Which, now, what is quality assurance? You must know what is quality assurance. Many people do not understand. I'm sorry to say that so many years, I, I, I have even visited a lot of pharmaceutical companies. And if I ask them, uh, what is the difference between quality assurance and quality control? They are not able to say, I'm really, I feel sorry about it. In a press conference also in Delhi, I made a statement, yes, the concept of quality assurance is not properly understood. So for your for your benefit, I'm just going through uh, what are the brief, uh, what, what exactly is quality assurance? Gives confidence to the management, proactive approach, preventive and predetermines the failure. It's a broad spectrum. A quality assurance man, it starts, his function starts from the vendor, from the supplier till the end user. Applies QMS, develops customer-centered specifications. Who makes the specifications? The customer, not you, not the standards. The customer makes you to, 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 to frame specifications to his liking. If the tablet is not serving its purpose, how does it matter, man? The way you have got your got you, uh, sophisticated equipment, you have got the world best equipment, you have got the highly qualified stuff. How does it make any difference unless? It, it, it satisfies you, so customer. Please understand that. Audits the entire system to capture the deviations and takes from takes them from... For... I would like to uh, just intervene a bit. I'm sorry, I'm so... Uh, I, I've got so much of thing to tell you. I'm bursting out. And uh, I just want to just uh, share a small thing that this QMS ISO 9000 and 2015 is the only international standard in the world now, it says, will not believe that after 50 years, they have removed the preventive action. This kappa, kappa, what you all call as corrective action and preventive action is gone. Only the corrective action is there. Preventive action has been eliminated by the ISO 9001 uh, people. Why? Because they have clearly mentioned they want to get into the PDCA and the risk-based thinking. So they have oh, removed, eliminated the preventive action. Can I believe, will you believe you can Google and see ISO 9001-2015, why they have removed the preventive action? Well, <clears throat> going ahead. Now, what is quality control? Now, we have heard in every, every organization, quality control, in fact, Japan, Japanese have eliminated QC approach. Why? Because it's a routine analysis of RMPM. If it gets rejected, you will simply say rejected. If it gets passed, you will get passed. If you want, if, if, if it's doubtful, you'll keep it on hold. But what is the net result? Will the product be dispatched that day? No, God only knows. So what is quality control? It's a reactive approach. It addresses the symptoms, not the cause. QC person will only report what went wrong. That's all. It's a postmortem. No use. We'll have strong controls over the product is produced. Reports, the results, passed or rejected, and you will go home. So what is the use, man? When you are making a product, you should give confidence to the management. The country is waiting for your medicines. And if it doesn't reach to the market in time, the market goes dry. The people will suffer. So what they should do? The quality control man also need to be a quality assurance man. He should get into the mode of quality assurance, preventive. 
and what how is it possible only it is possible only when instead of thinking what went wrong he should think what can go wrong instead of thinking what went wrong he should think what can go wrong so this is uh, the the concept now uh, now i i uh, go ahead uh, yeah now what is the quality management system uh, as i said earlier i don't want to spend because i've already told that is risk based thinking it is it is a risk based thinking they are they say it is mandatory and the mhra medicine and healthcare products regulatory agency in uk the toughest regulator body they say we want risk assessment to be done us fda has already got into it who who already got into it now why should a quality assurance do there why what should quality assurance do to assess the risk now it is not possible it is not written in any standards the all the three please please recall all the three incidents when i said where was it written it is a pakka gmp certified company and they failed to deliver they were following all standards they were following all the standard operational procedures <clears throat> and they were following the pharmacopoeia like a bible but they are de recognized they are, they have been told that they are doing manipulation that integrity became doubtful why because they did not do a risk based assessment so we are now going to uh, how to do the risk and all we are going to read we are going to uh, uh, we are going to uh, see uh, in the following presentation so qa has greater accountability on assuring the product uh, would be manufactured as per the customer requirement that is why quality assurance i am i am emphasizing on quality assurance <clears throat> now, we go to the now concept of quality assurance quality assurance is a way of preventing mistakes and defects in manufacturing process a way of preventing not detecting again the word risk is only when you when it is too late when you detect quality control man will analyze a sample give the results by the time the damage is done what if it fails what if it fails so today the quality as the, the concept of quality assurance has been is so deep rooted in japan and many multinational uh, 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 pharmaceutical organization also that they do not allow they will ensure that the product does not fail that's it whatever the management is not interested to take the excuses to hear the excuses you are starting i want this bag by this day finish you wanted the prime minister modi wanted hydroxychloroquine uh, to be supplied yes it was supplied there's no question of doing any quality control on that pakka quality assurance was done and the product was manufactured okay it's a different that now it is put on hold now uh, this is another uh, very good monitoring system which i saw in which i've seen uh, in nestle and cadbury multinational companies they in fact again this is also a way of uh, 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 preventing any failures this just you know wherever the process is going on it says what is the inspection point you need it is written it's like a mute policeman standing in front of you and you need to just enter it what is the inspection point what what is the purpose of inspection what are the parameters to be inspected who is analyzing it at what frequency you need to analyze and method of inspection what are the specifications to be followed and the most important is action upon deviation in case there is a deviation you don't have to phone your general manager you don't have to phone your seniors to ask there is a way already established to, to what action need to be taken when there is a deviation so and then finally what is the control point which is a critical control point or a control point as a so uh, or it's an operational prerequisite now these are the this basically in a food industry is very important because as i said i have seen this in very reputed food industries now key to quality assurance uh, we need to be very proactive and conduct a risk evaluation now when i was talking about risk there is a beautiful method of evaluating the risk today a very simple method uh, we will discuss about it and uh, it is called as failure mode effect analysis it is a full proof method even when mangalyaan landed in mars the space director uh, director of space administration came out and said we we made this mission successful because we did lot of fmes there no question of failures because this one it identifies the risk it quantifies the risk you this prioritize the risk 
and finally mitigates the risk. Now, let, let us, uh, having uh, talked about uh, the uh, FMEA, how does it look like? Just let us take an example. This is the process function. The potential failure mode is also there. The, what is the potential effect of failure is also there. And then the severity, the, the, the occurrence, and the detection. The, the FMEA, in being brief, they say that any risk is nothing but a product of severity multiplied into detection controls multiplied into occurrence will give the risk straight in quantification numbers you don't have to worry it is not a hypothesis it is just a mathematical number now what is, what, uh, what, what is basically severity severity is for example i'll give an small let us just take this slide uh, in a factory where uh, they are making packing materials there is a problem of pasting open the, suddenly the the pasted end opens what happens so because why this happens because inadequate glue there is no proper glue so the the packing material it gives off now when it gives off uh, what is the effect all the materials inside will fall off they will spill out the severity is very high that means the material will fall off anytime because of poor pasting because of the inadequate glue and the severity is nine what now uh, and we have seen in a factory many times this particular uh, deviation has occurred. And so if we, they have multiplied the severity into the occurrences, and what is the detection control? They have got only manual visual detection controls. So the visual detection controls are not dependable. You may see, you may not see, it may escape your notice. So finally, the risk is 810. You can see on the slide, it is 810. Then what they do, they, in, in, they, 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 they install a sensor, when they install the sensor, what happens? The severity will not go down. Please understand. In the risk, you need to remember, the severity will be the same. But the detection controls, you have improved the detection controls. The detection controls, for, uh, you have improved it, you have put a sensor, and therefore, now the risk level is 9 into 2 in occurrences have also reduced. So now the risk is only 36. See, what a fall. From 810, it has come to 36. Now, the next one. But further, uh, what happened? They did some more uh, modification. They started verifying the sensors. They started putting test pieces there to find out whether they really the sensor is working. They validated the sensors. By doing that, they got a zero defect. So you are trying to assess the risk. Now, failure mode analysis, uh, This I've already told about it. It's very simple, and uh, I will not waste much time on it. Six Sigma, I said, because it's a part, the failure mode effect analysis is an application of Six Sigma. It is Six Sigma, you are going to uh, take it up separately. And uh, it is it is the order of the day. 3.4 defects per million opportunities, 99.9996% efficiency, you are going to work on that. You can imagine uh, there are many companies in Japan which are working on Six Sigma. Um, well, uh, now let us just, this is an FMEA, the, what all I said, it is there in the... FMEA and uh, uh, how it looks like, the severity, the occurrence, the detection. I also told you the product of these scores, the product of this uh, severity into occurrence, into detection, uh, this is the risk priority number. And uh, this is the template. And now one more example I wanted to just, uh, um, uh, uh, one more example I wanted to give you. Uh, this is basically in a company, in a very reputed company, where they make milk powder for children. So in that company, I saw, uh, I happened to just see uh, about four, five, six, six years back, six years back. Now they have done a lot of improvements. Now, before filling the milk powder, they sterilize the entire area. The filling area, the powder filling area is entirely sterilized by exposure to UV. The whole night they keep the UV exposed. And the next day, if you just see, uh, they kept some standard for microbiological count. The severity, if you don't sterilize, the milk powder uh, will, uh, will, will get contaminated. The powder which is formed will get contaminated with some organism and it may cause vomiting, it may cause even fatalities in the kids. So the severity of this is very high. So I give it marks of 10. And then if you look at the detection levels, the detection level is also visual by microbiological count and it is man-based, human, man-based. Man -based. 
he may do it properly he may not do it properly his hands may not be properly clean he himself might be contaminated who knows the occurrence was also very high and the risk was 400 500 400 is too high for it they stopped the quality assurance people came and they stopped the they stopped the process now what next then what they did they found that why did they stop the 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 uh, uh, production people asked, why did you stop it? Why did you stop it? He said, we stopped it because they said, yeah, there is no bacterial growth. There is no bacterial growth on the on the uh, on the plate. And the plate count clearly says zero bacteria. How can you say? Did you put a standard? Did you put a negative control? Did you put a positive control? Did you validate? How do you know? Maybe this media itself is uh, 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 spoiled. Maybe the media uh, itself is not what to to do a microbiological count so now what they did after that they started they put the negative controls they put positive controls for every batch for every batch they didn't do only by they didn't go only by the plate count they also side by side put uh, uh, um, positive controls negative controls only by seeing them only by validating the, the process it came to zero defect they did not get a single deviation after that now next now coming to the failure mode effect analysis going forward uh, <clears throat> highest risk is the when it is thousand that is when the severity is also high when the occurrence is also very high and when the detection controls also very high so it is nothing but disaster uh, and 500 rpm is high risk so moderate risk is severity that is comes to 250 the product or service would fail. The low risk is below 40. Below 40 is normally considered as a safe uh, risk. And zero defect is only when you get zero defect, nothing like that. Now, what are the steps of uh, FMEA? It's very easy to do a uh, risk evaluation. Now, as I said, this is not found in any of the standards. No standard tells you how to do the risk. Very simple. Uh, I'm proud to say that probably in, in, in the country, I'm the first man to start to initiate a FMEA process, a risk evaluation process in a clinical trial center, which I did. I successfully did it and uh, they are carrying out the risk. They, and they found a lot of uh, importance. They, they found a lot of loopholes when they did the risk analysis. How to do the risk analysis? Now, list down all the procedures, list down all the activities, what is happening in your organization department wise you need to do it department wise list down all the activities now in that activity find out which activity has got a potential threat and according to that you give the severity and you also find out what is the probable occurrence of that activity the deviation what is the failure mode and how many times it has occurred and then what are your current detection controls? Are your detection controls validated? Are they manual, man-based, or they're automated, they're machine-based? If it is machine-based, are they validated regularly? Now, here, we, we I'll just uh, uh, take an example of where I did this. It is in a clinical trial. As you all know, they are, for any bio study, they, they take uh, volunteers they are, they, who, are, who ultimately become subjects for clinical trial. Now, in this case, uh, a, a unit which was the severity of selecting uh, a wrong volunteer can have a direct impact on your results, on your clinical results. The bioequivalence, whatever results you get, may not be true, may not be, uh, may not be acceptable. So, in this case, therefore, what they do, the volunteers whom they take for clinical trials, they are not supposed to take till they get 90 days of rest. But they don't have any method to find out. If any volunteer says, yes, sir, I'm fresh man. I've got no problem. I never underwent any other test before. And I'm and uh, clinically, when they do a test, uh, a, a kind of a, mm, uh, 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 what do you call, mm, uh, blood test and all that for the fitness, they found very well. And now what happened was the the results, the as, as expected, this man, had participated in several trials. So the severity is very high. You are taking a wrong volunteer, and the feedback of the study would be wrong. Absolutely, 
absolutely uh, unacceptable. So the occurrences, they were not getting proper results and the clinical trial feedback was very poor. So the detection controls also, there were no detection controls. It was based on this, his own statement, his own declaration. Then what is, they found out in the risk that yes, there's a big risk. Ultimately, when the risk is clearly indicating that your risk priority number is 720, you have to work on it, you have to work on it, and you have to see when you do a re-FMEA, the risk priority number should come down drastically, as I said, below 40. Only then it is acceptable. What they did, they, keep, they kept a sensor. The sensor will block. The sensor is such that it will block the volunteer if it is even one day, if he is one day before, below 90 days. He need not say, he can say, oh, well, I have, uh, I have taken enough rest, I have not participated, I have not done any cross-participation. But yes, yeah. the the OVS software, uh, it, it, it really helped in uh, finding out whether the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the volunteer was fit enough. Okay, now, we straight away go to the thumb rule. I, I don't have to say all that. I've said enough about it. We straight away go. Now, if you see the severity, the highest severity, you give a rating of 10 for occurrence. The highest occurrence is 10, but in detection control, it is the reverse. Very strong detection levels, you give one. And very poor detection controls, you give 10. Now, as I said, Mangalyan satellite is also... It, the successful landing of Mangalyan also was due to several FMEs. Now, coming to good manufacturing, manufacturing practices, I said all these standards are in place. They are impeccable standards. But and uh, all these key elements, because the, now there are different uh, for parentals, there is a good man, separate good manufacturing practices, and for non-parentals, there is a, a different good manufacturing practices, and they are changing at an amazing speed. That's why it's called as current good manufacturing practices. What I'm speaking to you today may not be the, the uh, may not be the updated one. So it is at an amazing speed, the good manufacturing practices are changing. But then I, I would like to just uh, take you fast uh, over the key elements. I've just condensed it uh, to in, in a, that there are about 19 key elements uh, on GMP. The leadership, training, design, construction, installation, formula, cards, written procedures, validation, housekeeping, pest control, sanitization, maintenance, starting materials, making materials, packing operations, storage and handling of finished product, laboratory controls, process controls, in process and finished product release and control, records, self-improvement program, complaints handling, quality system, results tracking and improvement, and accountability for contractors. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, these are, if you just see uh, the, uh, the, the leadership, yes, they're very common. Every organization is GMP certified. Needless to say, uh, they are absolutely on dot and they are aligned to this. So uh, there's nothing wrong in that. It is only we need to change our attitude. As I said, you may be GMP certified, you may be WHO certified, nothing will work. You are ultimately caught if you don't have a risk-based thinking. Okay. Now, the, this is all about the key elements, the training part of it. I said the most important thing in the organization is the training. You, you cannot have a person uh, who is not trained to do a skill job. So you, training is so important that, you know, people today, the inspectors, they ask, did you perform a test? When did you conduct it? Where is the question paper? Where is the answer paper of the of the trainee? They they that is why the answer papers, the test answer papers by the trainee is also preserved. It is a record. It is a GMP record. They will ask for it. If you say this guy is trained, let me see his records. Let me see his answer papers. How much how much how much did he score in that test? So to that extent, now these are the design construction installation the validation, the contamination. I've already highlighted in bold, contamination is the main thing. If you say, I'm using HEPA filters, I'm using a, a purified water, all that. If you say, I'm using a, a imported autoclave, you will say, how do you know it is sterilizing? How do you know it is the air is sterilized? How do you know that the HEPA filter is working properly? Everything requires to be validated. You need to show proof you need to show evidence to the inspectors. It is not simply hearsay. 
Now, <clears throat> the formulation cards, these are the other requirements. I'll quickly go through it because uh, the written procedures, yeah, the written procedures, they are to be religiously followed. The validation ultimately is very important. As I said, when that, if you see, recall an incident where the mixer was not working, when the mixer is rectified by the maintenance and again resubmitted, you once again need to do an installation qualification. And machine which is reserviced, re uh, re 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 repaired and comes back, once again need to undergo the process of installation qualification and then the operational qualification and the performance qualification. All that was missing. Uh, then the analytical parameters, wonderful. These are the stars of quality, the, 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 the installation qualification, all you see, precision, accuracy, specificity, selectivity, sensitivity of the method, limits of detection, limits of quantization, the reproducibility, the repeatability, all, all, assess the risk. These elements are not adequate. These elements are not sufficient to convince your inspectors. You need to show evidence and you need to always think on what possible things can go wrong, what risk you, you need to assess the risk and you need to have an evidence that you have undergone the risk. How to, how to identify the risk? It is by various audit findings. You need to audit, you need to take a, do a brainstorming session. The people are working there. You need to get, uh, you need to study the case studies of uh, or other pharmaceutical sectors where USFDA have uh, visited or inspected. So all that, you know, it gives a, a lot of inputs on what are the risks, what possible things can go wrong. It's quality assurance. Everybody should get into the mode of what can go wrong, what can go wrong in their respective departments. Now, these are the housekeeping pest control. Very simple. You need to follow fires religiously. I hope you all know that and you are following it in many pharmaceutical companies. The students also are supposed to be exposed to this familiar fires methods, which are wonderful methods. Uh, uh, every every organization would like to be a fires. Then the starting materials. Now, we, we know all the raw materials. You I know you'll follow it. You'll follow the IP methods. You'll follow your standard operation process. Yet you will fail. Why? A product comes inside your factory. Say, this is uh, API, say, for example, API paracetamol. Yeah, you will just take two bags and you test it and you say it is okay, finished, gone. Not possible. Who knows? The bags concealed in, in, in the lorry at the bottom or in the center could have an expired batch. You could have a deteriorated product. So all that. Okay. Now, so you need to be very careful. Your sampling method, the risk, risk, risk. Risk is, you should always think the top bags might be might be really of good quality. But did you assess what can go wrong in the down the line? So you need to do an intensive sampling. It is not sufficient if you do root 10 plus 1. That's it. You cannot get because 100 bags have come, I'll do 11 bags 10 plus 1. No, you can't do that. So these are all the risk evaluation I'm trying to say. Packing operations, once again, these are the basic requirements. The key elements are already there. They're already established. Not sufficient. You need to trace out. You need to find out in these milestones what can go wrong. Storage, handling, and finish of finished product. Laboratory controls, the process control, uh, assess the risk. Everywhere I'm writing, assess the risk. In process controls and finished product release control, assess the risk. No need to ask, action upon deviation. No need to ask anyone. Assess the risk here in the records. The records are the most vulnerable, most vulnerable, uh, what you call element where manipulations are done, but you can't escape. The inspectors are so clever, they can find out where you have gone wrong. And any manipulation, any suspicion of manipulation also will delist the company forever. You lose the license forever. Now, self-improvement programs, this is by training. Complaints, most important, you need to take complaints very seriously. First of all, you should not make a complaint back. There should not be complaints. Why should there be a complaint? when you assess the risk and you are absolutely on dot with the standards and your people are trained, your machines are validated, your process is validated, you're following the standard operation procedures, why should there be a complaint at all? You should go with that quality, with that assurance. Then the quality systems, uh, then the accountability for the contractors, the ratings for the key element. Here I would like to say 
you can even rate your good manufacturing practices. This is a formula. I will definitely share this presentation to the institution. You can rate rate the the uh, the or uh, the organization. Uh, what is the current rating of GMP? Well, why we fail to achieve quality? You have the specifications. You have got good calibrated instruments. You have trained staff. You have qualified and skilled people. You have experienced persons. You have good machinery. You have the technology. Why we fail to achieve quality? Why we? You have good raw materials. You have required SOPs. Your systems aligned to ISO. You have all standards. You have the capital flow. Yet you fail to deliver quality product. Why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Can you? Can anyone guess? Who cares for what standards you follow? Who cares for what infrastructure you have got? Who cares for what process you are following? Who cares for the qualifications your expert staff are employed? Who cares for the strict supervision you have? Who cares for the top machineries you have? Very simple. You simply fail to achieve quality because you did not understand the needs of the customer. Yes, hydroxychloroquine. They got the feedback from the user, the person, the 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 doctors. The end users who had actually taken it that it was of not use, it was not helping them. Therefore, they put it on hold. So you need to understand the customer. Why you the 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 product made by you is not uh, as effective as a multinational company product. I'm just giving an example. Why both are paracetamols, both are 500 milligrams, both are 650 milligrams, whatever it is. You make the same process, you get the best uh, API. But why is it that your tablet is not going to work? What is the risk? Did you do a clinical trial on that? Did you do a bioequivalence on that? Robust risk evaluated SOPs, ruthless audits, relentless training is the key to success. Why risk based thinking? Only in pharmaceuticals do it in real life. My dear um, uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you need to do it in real life. What you're doing it today, the corona has made it to, to, to evaluate the risk, you, to identify the risk. The risk may not be the same in every home. The risk may not be the same to every person. But then you are you have to evaluate the risk, and risk evaluation is the order of the day. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, few questions arise. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, giving a detail detail uh, lecture in this. And uh, the question is, uh, how FMEA is quantified? That is failure mode effective analysis, uh, effect analysis quantified. Okay. Now, wonderful question. Very good question. Now, I, I just give an example. Uh, yes, uh, the, I said, what is risk? Risk is nothing but a multiplication of severity into the occurrence, into the detection levels. Now, for example, uh, say, for example, uh, 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 the use of a uh, rejected raw material in the in the, I mean making a processing. The use of a rejected material means I am using a rejected raw material, and the severity if it gets if a rejected batch rejected raw material is used uh, for making a batch, the severity is very high. It it may cause it may first of all it may not have any. Uh, therapeutic effect at all. It may uh, and it is spurious. And if it is caught by the drug inspector, you are, you will lose your license. Your company will close. So the severity on the business on the quality is also very high. So you rate it as ten, right? Now you now occurrence. You have to see how many times when you have used a near rejected batch or borderline rejected batch, you would have seen, and the stability is not as strong. It is not. Uh, uh, and the stability is certainly uh, impacted if you use a rejected material. It may not have the the labeled claim. The date of expiry, what you are mentioning, may not be uh, to that extent. So the occurrence also, you can rate it as. Now for occurrence, you suppose you can rate it as 5. So 10 into 550. Now what are the detection controls? What are the detection controls? The detection controls, you are using a rejected batch or not, it is, there is no equipment, there is no machinery. It is only a test. Your quality person, he tests it. Probably he has given concession and he has cleared the batch. Because they, they, some people, you know, they say, why are you rejecting a batch just because it was... So they... And, and, the, and the detection controls are also, you put it as 5. So 10 into 550, 5 into 5, 250. So like that. Now, I can reduce I can reduce the, uh, the RPN. How I will ensure that I will not use a rejected batch. 
So what happens when you don't use a rejected bag? The detection controls are strong. So I come down to one. So 10 into 515 to 150. So this, this is how the quantification is. Yes, sir. Any more yes. questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. And one more question is there. Sir, uh, if the quality assurance is effective, then why FMEA and the QBD, etc. coming up? Yes, very good question. Sir? Quality assurance <laughs> is not a department. It is a way of life. Quality assurance goes on updating. Quality assurance, they, they change the procedures. They change the, uh, the, the specifications as per the time. Now, for example, quality assurance, uh, uh, though they may be very efficient, would they assess the risk quality assurance will have to think all what can go wrong in all all stages right from the vendor no quality assurance man will not be there once the product is manufactured no he if he goes to the if he goes to the supplier as i said quality assurance man now record the 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 uh, the, the specifications say that you have to test this many uh, bags in a raw material when it comes you need to keep in a quarantine and you have to take some uh, say uh, root 10 plus 1 to take some some 11 bags that's all if you test like that you fulfill the quality requirement but quality assurance man will start working on the risk how can i go by 11 bags that means the the quality control man will take a sample from the 11 bags kept on the top of the lorry what do you know how do i know there's a big risk how do i know that the bags which are below they are of good quality so what he will do he will do a intensive sampling what he will do, he will take one bag from the top, one bag from the middle, one bag from the bottom, one bag from the side, one bag from the left side, and he will make a composite sample. Now, is it a true way or not? Yes or no? Now, if he does that, he is trying to minimize the risk. Now, this risk, this way of sampling is not mentioned in any organization. It is not mentioned in any standard. It is just based on drink. If you feel, yes, the quality assurance man feels, yes, the risk has to be evaluated. The risk is there. There is a possibility of having a substandard raw material. There's a possibility. Yeah. So therefore, quality assurance is nothing. But all this risk, they need to continuously do an FMEA to find out what is the highest risk in your process activity and try to mitigate it, mitigate it, put the corrective action in place. And when you do a next, when you do a next FMEA, it should come from 500, it should come down to 50. From 50, it should come down to 5. And from 5, it should come to 0 defect. Yes, sir. Anything else? Any ah, other question? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other question? I am not having any questions. Audience, any questions, sir? Sir, I had posted a question in the chat bar, sir. Yes, yes sir. you are. You can ask now. Afan, you can ask. You can ask now. Ask now. It's directly. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, sir, I wanted to ask, sir, sir when the uh, ah. hydroxychloroquine passed the quality assurance test, sir, then why its production is holded by World Health Organization, sir? Wonderful, wonderful question, sir. Wonderful question. As I said, all these standards are impeccable standards. I gave you three incidents of three companies which were thoroughly GMP certified, WHO certified, but they could not produce an evidence that the microbiologist has come on that day. Huh? The same thing, hydrochloroquine was believed that it would also have some effect on the virus. They believed it. There was no time to do any clinical trials. So they believed it, and, and by the hearsay of some doctors and scientists, they said, why not we give them? Initially, it was showing some effect. But later on, on doing a risk evaluation, they started getting feedback that it is it is not effective, it is not curative. So so they they put it on hold. They they got they did a uh, statistics. They did a, they got a unique feedback from entire world, and they found that why should we make hydroxychloroquine because it is not having any curative effect. That is how they put it on hold. So quality control, it passes, it has got the same purity, it has got the same, it, it is absolutely as per United States pharmacopoeia and all, everything is fine, but it does not have a curative effect, you did not do a clinical trial, in fact there was no time to do a clinical trial, yes sir, any other questions? Any other questions? No madam, thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Yes sir, thank I have no much uh, one more I, uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, now I want to be. Can I be present in the session or? Uh... 
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, can I be present in the session? How was the session? Just uh, uh, my voice was clear. Thank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I spoke, my voice was very clear. Yes, sir. It was very yes, good. Yes, sir. Voice was very clear. Yes, sir. Very clear. It was nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. K.K. Vishwanathan, sir, for your enlightening speech. It was very informative. The participants must have gained a good knowledge about the CGMP. Now we are moving to session two. The speaker for this session is Mr. Srinivasan. Mr. Srinivasan is Quality Operation Manager in Alcon, a Novartis division in Malaysia. He did his B form from JKK Nadraja College of Pharmacy and M form from Pharmaceutical Analysis from C.R. Baird Mehta College of Pharmacy. We are very proud to have such efficient personalities as our alumni. He is the subject matter expert in analytical areas like handling HPLC, GC, dissolution, etc. He has guided many postgraduate students for their projects related to analytical area. He is having more than 18 years of experience in pharmaceutical and medical device industry in the field of quality control, analytical development and quality assurance. He is also appointed as subject matter expert trainer for German dual vocational training program for the site, which is linked to Malaysian dual training system. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation. And now you can start the session. Srinivasan, sir. Yes, uh, good morning to you all. Could you hear me? Yes, sir. First, I would like to uh, thank you all for uh, coming this session and uh, my special thanks to my friend Ubai and our beloved uh, Grace Madam and uh, dear professors and teachers and below my beloved young pharmacist. Welcome to the session and thank you for reaching out to me. I am plan I'm glad to give some in insight on the current regulatory expectation with respect to the medical device industries. Are you ready? Yes, sir. We are ready, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We can hear you. Please ready. go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Ready. ready. As, uh, thank you for the brief introduction. As I mentioned, I did my master's degree in pharmaceutical analysis in our organization. I have 18 year experience in quality control, analytical development, and quality assurance. And currently working as quality operation manager at Alcon, which we are manufacturing contact lens, the class 3 contact lens. Basically, I am from Tamil Nadu. Since from 2014, I am working here in Malaysia. I am married with Parmeshwari, and I have two daughters. Our elder one is seven years old, younger one is three and a half year old. This is all about my personal background. As agenda, did you all hear about MD SAP? The MD SAP is Medical Device Single Audit Program. The first one, I as already uh, organizer announced that kindly turn your handphone in silent mode and can you put your microphone? Yes, you all already done. Now I am going to share some info about history of the medical device standard and ISO class structure. What is new in ISO 13485 and 2016? What is in the MDSAP. What are the participating countries under MDSAP program? And what is the uh, comparison between ISO and MDSAP? And what is the requirement for MDSAP? What are the benefits? And who is the auditing organization? What is the auditing model? I mean, structure, frequency, approach, grading the non conformities and reported. Then finally, we have question and answer discussion during the session if you have any questions any at any given point of time you may raise your hand or put in your chat box our organizer will note down and we will try to answer as much as possible if not definitely i will get back the answer as at the earliest is it clear yes sir clear clear history of standards 
Do you know what is mean by ISO? Maybe answer you guys can put in the chat box. I want to have two way communication. I want to have uh, uh, interactive session rather than one way speaking. Those who are giving the first right answer, they will give, get some virtual gift or maybe physical gift during my next visit to India. ISO standard, the first, it is introduced 1987. Yeah, a couple of answers coming. International standards for organization is wrong. ISO means for international organization of standardization. Thank you. Thank you for answering. The 1987, the standard was introduced and focused on the conformity procedures. <coughs> then 1994, they again re revised, they have given the preventive action. What are the failure is there? And based on that, what are the preventive action we need to have at the manufacturing sites? If the documentation is heavy. Then ISO 2000 is the concept of process management. It is it's a center for emphasis, a clear evidence, documented evidence, then continual process improvement and customer satisfaction. And ISO 2008, clarified issues rise from 2000 version. And ISO 2015, which is the latest standard, reflects the latest quality management with the new high level structure of annexer. This is a normal ISO. Here is the ISO for medical device. Medical device standards mean for 13485. Is 1996 the continual improvement to the enhance the customer satisfaction, allowed manager to use the auditor to enforce the documented procedure. And 2003, there is amendment again to main on the effectiveness and added the requirement, the process analysis and measurable objective on top of the management commitment. And 2016 is a clear guidance and implicit requirement to make auditing easier. Alignment with the regulations, application of the standard to new technology and risk-based approach. This is a comparison between normal ISO standard and ISO 1348 for the medical device requirement. History of the ENISO. Does anyone knows what is mean by ENISO? The ENISO actually we have three sections. One is for the active implantable medical device and medical device and in vitro medical device. The reason this one has is because like small scale industry, they cannot follow full uh, entire ISO standards. They suppose, for example, some of the industry, they are manufacturing class one device and they may not require to follow entire standards. So accordingly, they made some amendment and adjustment to have the ISO based on the applicability of the risk. <laughs> then later part, in September 2012, adoption of the commission proposal medical device into medical device and IVD, three section into two. That is a directive 90 and 93 is converted as regulation of the medical device. And then in vitro medical device is called IVDD. But now it's called as MDR, medical device requirement. This is a current status. ISO cross structure. Do you know how many classes in the ISO? ISO have eight classes, namely class one, two, three, scope, narrative reference, and terms and definition. First three classes are informative, and rest of the five classes are standard requirement. Standard four, quality management system, standard five, management responsibility, standard six, resource management, standard seven, product realization, standard eight, 
measure the analysis and implement. What is new in ISO 13485 Is there any new addition in the standard? No. Some expansion and clarification increase clarity with the improved linkage of clauses based on the risk and regulatory requirement. If you compare with ISO 2003 and ISO 2016, the word appropriate used 21 times, whereas in 2016, the word used 41 times, which emphasizes on the requirements. The word risk is used three times, but the word risk is used 12 times in the 2016, which emphasizes on the risk management. The word regulatory requirement is used nine times, whereas 2016, it is recommended 38 times emphasis on the regulatory requirement. Area of increased emphasis, <coughs> regulatory requirement, then risk management, validation and verification, outsource process, supplier control, feedback. These are the key areas they increase the emphasis. As, as the last speaker has uh, spoken about risk and RPM, I think it's all clear. Or uh, you want me to explain any simple explanation? <coughs> any process possesses a risk, and we need to have the risk probability number with the severity as remain unchanged. Occurrence and detectability is interchangeable based on the engineering and design control we have. So according, there is no reference or system there as user can predict as the previous speaker spoke about one to 10. Even some of industry, they will uh, consider one to five. One is the low risk, three is the moderate, and five is the high risk. Accordingly, we can calculate the risk priority number to have the discussion. <laughs> validation and verification. Can anyone tell me how many types of validation is there? You can use a chat box. Come on, pharmacist, please, come on. Can you name the four? Yes, Nairobi, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, it's a principally the validation of three category and the revalidation is the addition is the continuous part. Yes, you are right. Uh, thank you very much for the giving answers. And what is mean by verification? What is the difference between validation and verification? For example, validation is the uh, assurer of the process, right? For example, you are manufacturing 100,000 tablets. You will be testing only 100 tablets or 200 tablets. You are not testing entire uh, lot of the uh, tablets. So you are validating your process to ensure the predetermined standard meeting or not. For us, verification, for medical device, we generally use the verification where the device is manufactured. For example, you are manufacturing the gloss spectacles. The spectacles, so you can verify the power and the uh, correction. If you are the process or the individual device are able to verify 100%, then you no need to perform any validation. If the 100% verification is not feasible, then you need to do validation. Outsource product service. What is meant by outsource product service? Can anyone? Generally, outsource process, for example, we have some external lab for testing or sometimes we buy the granules for compression. So those are the partial or semi-goods, semi-finished goods we will be buying from other third parties. That's what we call outsource product or outsource service. There will be a supplier qualification when you are buying the material, key sorting material and raw materials, you need to qualify them for the meeting your requirements. 
then customer feedback always is a give and take policy so you have to get the feedback from customer what they need and how they want accordingly you should manufacture for them the regulation uh, can anyone tell what is the highest regulation in the industry which industry is having the highest regulation can use a chat box which industry is having the highest regulation is a pharma or uh, electrical or uh, uh, what do you call uh, fertilizer or automobile which industry is having the highest regulation parental pharmaceutical no come on guys please we participate i like to have a two way con conversation not uh, not not necessary to have just is nothing right or wrong it's relevant or irrelevant we can discuss not a problem it is not your examination okay the highest regulation in the world is in the atomic nuclear industries the second highest regulation in the industry is the aircraft aeronautics third highest regulation is pharma on medical device is it clear first highest regulation is atomic nuclear industries second one is aero aircraft aircraft third one is pharma and medical device can anyone guess what is the basis of these regulation and standards i may give the clue is a five letter word very good excellent nairobi yeah i my hands up to you yes the safety yes. is safety is the prime focus yeah can you all see this picture what is the resemblance can someone inform me the gmp history and what is the picture mean for yes thalidomide incident yes very good <laughs> yeah the the thalidomide of the block day for the pharma industry before to the thalidomide we had some sulfonamide elixir there is a propylene glycol uh, used to prepare the elixir where impurity or by product diethylene glycol was mixed up the thalidomide is the mainly for the which purpose they use can anyone answer what is the use of thalidomide Yes, bonus. Yes, right. It's sickness. Basically, thalidomide is used for uh, is the preliminary invented for the sedative. They have not tested for the pregnant women. However, this thalidomide causes co-inhibitory nausea vomiting. It's a morning sickness. As a pregnant woman, always tends to have nausea vomiting in early morning. Say so they gave this medicine to them. Then they realized later around 200. 2000 children were dead and around 10000 children were birth defect with short of limbs and hands then they realized that this drug is not suitable then they withdrawn in 1961 there were the uh, uh this was the turn around point for the pharma industry and regulation become into the picture thank you very much for the participation i really appreciate that the iso basically you all know that the pdca plan and do check act there will be a input there will be output there will be a one way information flow or sometime will be a value added activities will be <clears throat> there in the flow just you can self read it i think all of you know about the iso though so i want to don't want to spend much time on this if any doubt is there please ping me okay now i am coming to the our main agenda is mdsf so far we are clear on history on how the standards are arrived what is the uh, cross
Medical Device Single Audit Program, MDSAP is a program that allows to conduct a single regulatory audit of medical device manufacturer quality management system that satisfies the requirement multiple regulatory jurisdiction. Audit are conducted by auditing organization authorized by the participating regulatory authorities to audit under MDSAP requirement. The objective of MDSAP is the program's main mission is to jointly leverage the regulatory resource to manage an efficient, effective and sustainable single audit program focused on oversight of medical device manufacturer. This was implemented from 2014 to 2016 initiate the pilot three years. The operational become 2017 onwards. First enforcement country is Canada by last year 2019. What are the participating countries? There are five countries or five big brothers are the main participating in the MDSA program, medical device program. The therapeutics put TGA by Australia, Anvisa by Brazil, and Health Canada, and QSR by USFDA, and Japan, Ministry of Health and Labor and Welfare. These five big brothers are mainly participating country in the MDSAP program. Is EU status on the MDSAP? Is EU is participating? No. EU, they are not participating, they are observing the MDSAP program now. Did you all hear about EU MDR changes? The EU MDR changes any product in the market medical device by May 2022. It should have manufacturing date. Currently, many medical device or food will be having only expiry date. They, we need to have manufacturing date if your product on the market by May 2022. And we should give evidence for clinical trials as applicable. In addition to that, you need to give the waste management also. The European countries are main concern on the environment. And for example, you use you are exporting gloves to them. After you said how you are going to dispose the gloves. Those waste management also should be reflected in your Registration. What is meant by QP? Can anyone answer? In Europe, what is meant by QP? Come on, guys. QP is a qualified person. Currently, in Europe, only pharma industry have qualified person. They are authorized to. Uh, thank you, Priyanka. Yeah. Uh, they are on, they are QP is authorized to release a product in the Europe region. As like pharma, they, there will be a enforcement to have QP for medical device release also. As a feature, we will be having more opportunity on the medical device QP. Did you all hear about Brexit? What is in the Brexit? Can anyone inform me what is meant by Brexit? Yes, yes, Priyanka, Nairobi, yeah. Brexit, exit of the European Union, Britain. They are extended to next year. So what is the impact? Do you know what is meant by CE? What is meant by CE? European Conformity, Conformity of European Act, right? So if you want to sell any product in the Europe market, you should have the CE mocking. The CE mocking, there is the agent like ISO authorized agents, BSA or TUV. They used to have each number, each, each auditing organization have the number. For example, if they are selling the toothbrush in the Europe, they used to have the CE mocking. If the Brit, the most of the Auditing organization or certified bodies are located in London. Once the British is coming away from the EU region,
sorry you are sorry for the noise um, i think someone is uh, want to ask some questions you can ping me or you can ask not issue so the ce mocking if the most of the certifying or notified bodies are located in the britain if they are britain is leaving from the eu union they are no longer their ce mock is valid so all the pharma and medical device industries those were already certified they need to have re certification which is eu region that's why the ce mock and brexit also most important to the pharma and medical device industries is it clear so far now we are going to compare iso with medical device single audit program iso is a voluntary standard nobody will enforce you it's your option to follow whereas mdsf is a regulatory requirement governed by the law with the country specific jurisdiction iso also is a voluntary implementation whereas mdsf is a mandatory implementation if you want to sell any product to the five big brother countries you need to follow mdsf requirement otherwise you are not authorized to sell in that particular countries iso is a prescriptive and mdsf is interpretive iso is a conformity fulfill of requirements can be requirement of the product or the qms whereas mdsf is a compliance fulfillment of legal and statutory requirement non compliance can be lead to fines or debar from the bar from the selling the product i also have five classes mdsf has seven chapters the process i also have sub classes whereas mdsf has task i also is being followed in 5172 countries whereas mdsf at this moment five countries can anyone recall the five countries which you have seen previous slides what are our five big brothers for mdsf australia yes brazil yes usa yes japan yes canada yes very good these are the five big brothers for the mdsf participating at thank you very much for the participation very much appreciated as we as we mentioned mdsf having the seven process the seven process the namely called first process is the management there are 11 tasks and second process called device marketing authorization or facility registration three process measurement analysis and improvement 16 tasks medical device adverse event and advice advisory notice reporting there are two tasks design and development 17 tasks production and service control 29 tasks purchasing 16 tasks totally 94 tasks in this mdsf requirement the task is available in the mentioned website i so you can open the link you can uh, you can get the mdsap uh, i have backup slide so i will share later hi hi would can someone can help me i want to book back to slide show yes got it okay so what is the benefit of mdsf uh, the <clears throat> minimize the medical device manufacturing disruption due to the multiple regulatory audits in pharma and medical device industry every year we used to have audit based on the different countries requirement once if you have 
countries have audit, the five countries can follow one audit. Leverage regulatory resource. They can interchange the between these countries. Benefit of patient and health patient access. Provide global benefit both short term and long term goals. IMDRF, International Medical Device Regulatory Forums. There are few more countries like Singapore, China, Russia, all in the forum, but they are now observing the medical uh, MDSA program. What is the manufacturer benefits? No additional recommend for the manufacturers. The single audit will optimize the and resource. And routine audit are scheduled and planned with the auditing organization. Expected to improve predictability. Expected to add additional regulatory authorities. Regulatory wise, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Japan, USA all have benefit because they are going to interchange each other and also some exclusion for USFDA, complaints follow, they will, USFDA will come and pre or post market approval, FDA will come, combined product, FDA will come. Remaining audit will be conducted by auditing organization. What is the requirement in India? Can anyone tell? Do you know about DCA? Drugs and Cosmetics Act. There is no specific requirement at this moment in India for medical device. There are few devices are listed or notified. I think less than 50 devices are registered in our uh, Drugs and Cosmetics Act. Those only need a registration. Remaining you can get from NOC, means uh, our uh, Drugs Controller General of India can issue no objection certificate so that you can sell any medical device in India. Is it clear so far? Now coming to the auditing organization. As the five big brothers, they are giving, they are appointing third party to audit the facilities that is called the auditing, auditing organization. Each regulator engage three years rotation. USA three years they are done since from 2014. Now Brazil is doing leading the MDSA program. WHO and EU is observer at this moment. There are three stages in the auditing organization. Application stage, begin audit stage, completed stage. For example, if you want to be a auditing organization under the MDSF program, you need to apply. Then you need to participate audit with them. Once they certify you, then you, you will become independent auditing organization where you can do audit on behalf of regulatory requirement. Currently, BSI, TUV ESA, TUV Sudan, GMAT, and there are 12 more auditing organizations are applied in total. Only these auditing organizations are eligible to audit under the MDSAP program. How the audit structure will be there? The regulatory authorities will do the assessment, then they will notify to auditing organization then auditing organization will conduct the audit at the manufacturer. Once the manufacturer audited, they will send the reports or uh, non-conformities and CAPA plan. Then the final report will be sent to regulatory. So the auditing organization will be acting bridge between manufacturer and regulatory authorities. Audit frequency. Audit will be three year cycle. First time will be the stage one and stage two. That is a certification audit. Then followed by second year and third year will be surveillance audit. Then on the end of third year, there will be a re-audit program. That is, note that all, not all regulatory authorities require a certificate. Few only need certificates. Other possible okay. audits, special audits, change of non-conformance or supplier or post-market issue follow, audit by regulatory authorities and unannounced audits. Audit approach. The four primary process will be taken into the account, management, measurement analysis and improvement, design and development, production and service control. Then three supporting process, device marketing authorization, facility registration, medical device adverse event and 
advisory notice reporting and purchasing first four process and chapters are mandatory remaining three anyone they will take into the consideration now i am going to give you a challenge you are becoming auditor next one minute there will be a one i am going to share one picture that 20 seconds it will be displayed you need to identify how many animals in the picture got the my questions i am going to challenge you all now if you want to become an auditor i am going to display a picture now i will give 20 seconds time you need to identify how many picture in that picture how many animals in the picture now your time starts now Did you all got it? Five, four, nine. Yes, come on. Seven. Come on. Ah, oh, love one. Very good, Priyanka. Nice. Yes. If you have find less than five, please seek opposition for help. Five, less than five is you need to check the uh, opposition help. Between six to seven, you are a certified auditor. Yes. <coughs> Between eight to ten, yes, you are a best auditor. If you see more than ten, it's you are a better than the best. Actually, there are twelve animals in that picture. Thank you for the participation. So, audit duration. On the you have a task. You need to audit, right? Once the management, as we see earlier, we have management, 11 tasks, device marketing authorization, <coughs> 3 tasks, measurement analysis, 16 tasks, medical adverse event, 2 tasks, design and development, 17 tasks, production and service control, 29 tasks, purchasing, 16 tasks. Each task we need to give auditing time if you are going to verify one task each task you should spend minimum 36 minutes to verify the audit this was designed by mdsf authorizing countries so each task if you there so if totally seven chapter and the first time audit if you are calculating each task you will be spending around 50 hours and 58 minutes which is equal to 6.5 days any MDSAP audit program initially will be conducted minimum 6.5 6 days. But conventional approach, they go based on your headcount and your size capacity on your volume. But current approach based on task. If you manufacture only 100 device per year or if you have 100 million lenses per year, the audit approach remains same as per current approach. Audit process, initial certification audit. Stage one, as we have stage one and stage two initial certification, stage one will be documentation review, evaluation, and preparedness of the stage two audit. Stage two, evaluation of QMS implementation and effectiveness. From MDSAP perspective, primary purpose of stage one audit or to determine if a quality management system documentation record ISO 13485 plus 4.21 and other applicable MDSAP documentation. Requirements have been adequately defined and documented. It's like document based review. And to assess the manufacturer preparedness for the stage two, that is a physical audit. To provide focus for planning this stage two audit, the stage one audit will, have, will be having three purpose first purpose is the qms availability and second one is the manufacturer preparedness and third one is the focus for planning the stage to audit fourth one is the collect the information only the data collection 
what are the stage one inputs information about the manufacturers the main address sites involved if for example if the same manufacturer having different location different sites they can be audited together as a stage one audit stage two audit physical audit will be separately conducted odd shot number of people working on the operation shifts is there working on, uh, only one shift or 24 into 7 that that information extent of outsourcing like product and services information about the device name and description intended use accessories key materials use jurisdiction and classifications new product innovation marketing authorization any adverse event or recall and information about the manufacturer qms structure any certification have previous audit report by regulatory authorities or any notified bodies quality manual quality policy quality objective master list of sop approved vendor list vendor quality agreements this stage one audit can be performed of the site the mdc program the currently also we due to the covid situation everything we are doing in the virtually but mdc is already visualized that they can do the documentation based audit stage 1 will be off the site stage 2 will be at the site evaluation of qms implementation and effectiveness the purpose of stage 2 audit is determine all applicable requirements iso 13485 and relevant regulatory requirements from the participating regulatory authorities have been implemented the stage 2 audit objective shall be specifically included in the evaluation of the effectiveness of the manufacturer qms incorporating or applicable regulatory requirements product process related technologies like injection molding or sterilization adequate product technical documentation in relation to relevant regulatory requirement the manufacturer ability to comply with these requirements surveillance audit first and second surveillance audit is allowed as program the purpose of the series of surveillance audit is to assure that applicable requirements in iso 13485 and relevant regulatory requirements from participating regulatory authorities are audited during the cycle as three year program audit program for the manufacturer surveillance audit objective during the audit cycle specifically include evaluation the effectiveness of the manufacturer qms incorporating applicable regulatory requirements new and changed process or product related to the technologies new or amended product technical documentation relation to the relevant regulatory the manufacturer ability to comply with these requirements uh, there is one question in the chat box uh, thank you mr hussain uh, when the mdsf regulates all the medicines then what is the necessity of iso uh, yeah, as I mentioned the previously, the ISO is a voluntary standard. The MDSAP is a regulatory standard. ISO is being followed in 172 countries. The MDSAP is currently being followed in only five countries. If you want to sell any medical device with these five countries, you need to get certified by MDSAP single audit program by auditing organization. Otherwise, you no need to follow. The MDSAP is similar to the iso requirement however mdsf will be extended to the particular country jurisdiction requirement for example if you want to sell to the european countries you need to have the label in their local language even some of the countries the over labeling is not allowed those things will be individual country requirement will be listed in this requirement <laughs> clear uh Hussein? yes sir thank you sir thanks very much thank you very much for the question really appreciate that special audit when there will be a special audit special audit or extraordinarily audit in that they are not part of the planned audit cycle this audit should be used when necessary and should focus on specific elements of the manufacturer in the 
quality management system. Special audit should be used to address as applicable the need to extend the scope of the audit or certification of manufacturer, include new or modified product between regulatory program audit. A shortfall in oversight by the MDCF recognized auditing organization. For example, due to insufficient audit time, inappropriate audit team constitution, to follow up the post market issues, for example, potentially significant complaint, to follow up on the significant findings from the prevent MDCF audit, at the request and MDCF participating regulatory authority based on the specific assignment, to conduct supplier audit as dictated by regulatory authority or audit organization policy. For example, some product return likes returning, then there will be a special audit. <coughs> unannounced audit. Another type of special audit is unannounced audit. The MDC participating regulatory authorities require auditing organization to conduct unannounced audit in circumstances where high grade non conformance have been detected. When the higher issues are identified, then definitely there will be unannounced audit for the ensure the compliance. Okay, now the audit finding. Eh? I I display one picture now. Can you all read that one? Can anyone read loudly? The phenomenal power of the human mind. I could not believe that. Can anyone read? I could not believe that. I could actually understand what I was reading. The phenomenal power of human mind, according to. A research at Cambridge University it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and the last letter be in the right place. The rest can be a to total me that total mess and you can you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Amazing. Uh, yeah, the Lord thought uh, spelling Amazing was important. Yes, Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we always thought that spelling is always important. But in the re real life, spelling is not an important. When you need to audit, uh, you are going to audit, it is not that to find the faults. You need to go with the, uh, uh, ensure the complaints. They are adequately following or not. It's that kind of approach should be there. Even though the not even single word in the order, but we able to read it right. The purpose is followed right. Yes, we can able able to read it. This was the audit. Audit. We should audit on the uh, on the complaint standard requirement, not not to go on the uh, uh, false finding approach. Yes, once you have the findings and uh, we need to definition of the non community Yes, the definition is non remain on change. Now, MDCF is up, in addition to the non conformer they have grading system, which is recommended by the regulatory purpose. It gives the quantitative grading system. There is two steps in the grading system, initial grading by impact and occurrence. And second one is the escalation rule, final grading of the findings. For example, the NCA initial grading impact, the impact influence and safety of the performance, indirect and direct. The indirect is the only the documentation and the approaches. The direct is have the class 6, 6.4 to 8.5, have the direct influence of the design or manufacturing control. <clears throat> if a finding have direct impact, that rated is 3. If a finding have indirect impact, the rating is 1. Then occurrence. The first time if the finding is observed not in two previous audit, and repeat if the identified within the either two previous QMS audit. If occurrence is the first time, there will be a zero. If occurrence is coming repeated observation, the rating will be additional one. Then how they will escalate? Then when the finding found, there is the absence of documented process or procedure. Then we need to add one more rating. The release the non conformance product into the market. Then we need to add one more. The total maximum grade is five. For example, QMS in back, 
if you have one finding which is first time and you don't have adequate process and it has direct impact on the product then you will be rated as grade 5 is it clear then once your audit is ready then we need to report that t0 t is called audit end date then t0 plus 5 working days and audit organization to inform regulatory if the audit is identified one or more five non conformities more than two grade 4 for example if they found one grade 5 they should immediately notify to mdsf participating regulatory countries within five working days if they have more than two with grade 4 yes they need to notify to regulatory authorities or is there any public health threat or any fraudulent activity happened at the manufacturing site we need to notify to regulatory authorities within 15 calendar days due to date <coughs> could you hear me yes sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. To the manufacturer, provide a remediation plan, including coppers. Due audit plus 30 calendars, the manufacturer provides the evidence implementation actions, any grade 4 and 5. And within 45 days, auditing organization should submit the complete report to the regulatory authorities. If there are no findings or the normal report, the auditing organization, they can have 90 days to submit the report to the auditing organization. For, uh, once again, I specify that auditing organization to inform regulatory authorities within five working days if they have any grade five or grade four with the two or any public health and threat. Within 15 days, is the manufacturer need to give kappa plans what is mean by kappa can anyone answer corrective and preventive action yes very good corrective and preventive. what is the corrective action what is the preventive action can you elaborate Yeah, correction, corrective action is a correction to the incident. Preventive action is to avoid the reoccurrence. Now I'm coming to the summary and discussion session. We have seen history about the medical device standards, when the ISO formed, when the ISO for medical device is organized, and what are the ISO cross structures. On what is the new in the ISO 13485, specifically on the risk base and the regulatory emphasis, and what is the MDSAP program, and what are the participating countries? There are five big brothers, and what is the comparison between ISO and MDSAP requirement, and what is the MDSAP requirements? <clears throat> what are the benefits we will be ha having by having MDSAP program in the, in the medical device industry? on what are the auditing organization, how they will do, on what is the auditing model, how frequency and approach, on how the finding will be reported, including grading. Now is your turn. Is there any questions? I, I, I am glad to have any question, even if anything related to the GMP or anything else, you can ask me, but not issue, not not only to the regulatory requirement. Sir, one question. Yes, please. And the different medical devices, like uh, uh, ocular devices and uh, uh, hearing aid devices, is there different uh, MDSAP audit or same audit the different medical devices can be audited? Uh, the if you want to sell a product to the uh, five participating countries irrespective of the uh, medical device like, like class one class two class three 
the class one is a low risk you can register and you can sell it if the class two and class three based on the regulatory assessment they will recommend medical device single audit program whether it is applicable or not then regulatory authorities will advise auditing organization to audit that particular process specifically class three medical device is have the high risk for example uh, uh, implantable or face makers or the uh, monthly wear contact lens this is high risk medical device for example gloves and hospital beds and hospital device this is a class one no risk or uh, on like uh, syringe or blood transfusion is a moderate risk these all may not only based on the surveillance they will go ahead with the uh, approval the audit they will not specifically uh, need the audit at, before marketing the requirements so, however during the next audit they will survey it they will cover the your process uh, adequacy of the compliance so oh, another question is sir uh, when we are in exporting to mdsap following countries we are doing the audit uh, from them what happened from importing the devices from those countries to non mdsap countries uh that's non mdsap countries that is the leverage they are if you are uh, following mdsap by default you are following iso requirements about 172 countries the cost of the manufacturer will be more for the uh, regulatory authorities it's a business or user decision to import from them it is not a issue for them is it answer to your question yes sir yes sir yeah one more question what what about the feature and current thread of regulatory requirement medical device in india yeah this is a very, very good question in india uh, we are also uh, in, in addition to the pharmacopeia india also developing standard for the medical device and they are going to come up with the separate registration for the medical device our dcgi is already initiated uh, that activity a forthcoming india also to register and get it approved for any device which is manufactured and sold in india we need to follow now currently uh, any industry they only the less than 50 devices are listed in our drugs and cosmetics act those things they need to get the cmp gmp certification audit by the drug controller remaining all if they get the uh, uh, noc no objection certificate from our uh, dcga they can sell but feature thread they should follow the requirement and one more question from sushil kumar is the mdsf top down inspection as with the quality system inspection technique employed by fda yes mdsf is one of the one part of the uh, <coughs> fda just uh, give me a minute i will open the mdsf companion document still new to the go uh, new this uh, go meeting so i am trying to uh, <coughs> this is a md sap companion document which is uh, i have showed the link in the fda site it's available if you go at the uh, 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 link you can see the task one for example here the task one confirm the quality management system planning to perform to ensure that required process are identified documented implemented monitor and maintain in order to have applicable regulatory and meet the quality objectives verify the challenges quality management system are managed maintain conformity on the device or produce verify that the quality manual has been implemented if you see here class regulation iso is the class but here if you see cfr is the class but there is no specific requirement some of the requirement if you see <coughs> mm, see if the task 5 determine the extent of outsourcing process that may affect the conformity of the product specified requirement verify the popular documentation control in the quality management system if this case you need to follow australia and health canada requirement for fd also some of things i'll i can show the additional requirement and see 
if the goes for the task 8 verify that electronic records and documents that back up 21 cfr part 11 should cover on this year so each task or any specific country requirement is there is already listed in the <coughs> uh mdsa program so that it covers all all five countries requirement not only fda is it clear mr shukmar any more questions from the audience thanks right. feel free to ask is uh, anything is, is is nothing is right or wrong it is relevant or irrelevant i can uh, happy to share my views and my understanding so far in the uh, pharma and medical device industries any more questions if no questions i would like to share some story on the integrity and uh, close my session Uh, can i have two more minutes madam yes, or sir. organizer is it allowed two yes, more sir. minutes for yes. me yes sir okay thank you madam for uh, giving me uh, opportunity to have uh, two more minutes uh, yes, i i get for the end pharmacies currently we are lacking ethical and code of conduct and basically integrity you, do you know what is in the integrity integrity is uh, everything when doing right things when no one is seen what do you think what is that where we are asked now if you see current, uh, currently what we are lacking maybe our uh, discipline or the way we brought up our lack of resource we are somewhere misguided but if you run uh, if you run or if you like with integrity definitely you can succeed with integrity i want to share one small example with integrity there is one ceo he decided to retire he was uh, uh age and he plan to retire <coughs> uh so what he did he called the five of his top performing manager in this uh, in his organization he called all employees in the town hall open meeting guys i am going to retire i am going to give my responsibility to one of top five managers here so i am going to give five seats to them and i am going to call them after three months again those who are giving the uh presentation on the seed how they grown the seed and how they taking care of the seed the tree and the plants then based on the visual uh with the friend of you guys then i will take the decision who will be the uh, ceo of the future company then he gave five seats to each manager then uh, he left then the people the five manager they started uh, uh seed planting and they are um, pouring water irrigating water and add some fertilizer and see, uh, plants start turn up after three days the plant is turn up and they were talking in the canteen or some other meeting uh, hey my trees are already flower as born and someone is saying my is ripe out and one one guy is uh, tree is never turned up he was uh, telling that day to his wife hey my colleagues are telling that uh they are three already grown up and they someone have flowers someone have uh, uh fruits and uh, mine is nothing is uh, done what happened to me then his wife says never mind you keep continue don't give up you water give fertilizer and, and after end of three months his uh, his spot is nothing is kind of only uh, seed was there and uh, it's uh, it's not um grown up anything then ceo called at the town hall with all his employees and they put a uh, table and display the trees and some people uh, the out of five four people were presented very nicely with the trees and the flower and some are with the uh, uh, fruits but the one guy is presented is the empty pot the ceo uh, everybody is uh, eagerly watching ceo arrival time and what would be the reason who is going to deserve to be a future ceo here? ceo walked into the auditorium and he haven't interviewed anybody directly he announced the ceo of the future company who is uh, presented the uh, pot without any three sour flowers you know why the ceo the seed given to the people five people is already boiled and dried important 
the remaining four manager they see the seed growth they don't have the growth they change the seeds they grown up but the guy who was attempted pouring water he never changed the seed and he is trying to be original and he is become the ceo of the company it makes sense work with integrity succeed with integrity then rest is everything yours that's all from me thank you very much for your time and my uh, listening my voice once again thank you for organizing committee directly or indirectly uh, involved in this program and also my special thanks to uh, ubai my friend and madam grace for the reaching out me for uh, giving uh, opportunity to share this one with you all thank you very much my teachers my professor and uh, one and all and my teacher pharmacist and pharmacist thank you mr srinivasan sir for your informative speech the session was very live and thanks for making it so pleasant now i invite our faculty member dr priyanka sinha to deliver the vote of thanks priyanka Priyanka madam Priyanka madam Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good morning to one and all present here. Myself, Dr. Priyanka Sinha, Assistant Professor, Sail Bad Metha College of Pharmacy, uh, is uh, taking the pleasure to give you, convey the vote of thanks today. It gives me immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks on this special occasion of Webinar Four. Though this webinar four was organized uh, on a short span of time, we have received enormous registration numbers and uh, overwhelming responses from all over the um, country. I would like to express my gratitude towards the management of CL Bad Metha College of Pharmacy for providing us the facilities to organize this webinar. We are delighted to announce that the secretary of CL Bad Metha College of Pharmacy, Dr. Mr. Uday Metha. Sir joined us today at the beginning of the function program, and he has blessed us with his uh, encouraging words. That was so nice of him. This webinar was uh, graced by uh, him, and it was uh, a wonderful moment for us. His support and encouragement being the driving force for all of us. I'd like to convey my gratitude towards our beloved principal, Dr. Grace Ratnam, ma'am, for motivating us to excel beyond excellence. I would like to thank our distinguished uh, speakers, Mr. K. K. Vishwanathan and Mr. Murugeshan, for accepting our uh, invitation at this uh, short period of time and uh, allotting us this session from their valuable uh, busy schedule. And uh, we all have seen that the session was wonder wonderful and uh, interactive in true sense. I would like to appreciate the hard work rendered by the organizing team. Dr. Ubaidullah, Dr. Ramal Lakshmi, Dr. Kumar Vil Rajan, Mr. Vijay Kumar, uh, and a special mention to Mr. Shiva Kumar and Mr. Shatish Kumar for wonderful planning and execution of this webinar. Last but not the least, my sincere thanks and gratitude towards all the faculty members from all the departments of our college for cooperating with us and encouraging us to progress more. Thank you all, and uh, special. thanks to all the participants who have joined us from today from different institutions research institute academical institutions as well as from industries we expect your cooperation and uh, participation in our upcoming webinars also thank you all and uh, thank you one and all for gracing this occasion have a very good day and uh, maintain social distancing thank you see you in the next webinar thank you all thank you priyanka tomorrow also for the participant tomorrow also our session starts sharp by 9 am tomorrow second session is a live demo on autodesk
so the participants can download autodoc for in their laptop and keep it going for the live demo thank you all see you tomorrow thank you madam thank you sir thank you thank you madam thank you thank you thank you madam <coughs> good day went on well thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am thank you ramlishni this uh, downloading that uh, uh, software you told no so you should send a message or uh, for tomorrow we we uh, i will ask we can send by mail also ma'am we will send by mail the oh. link is sent you no know, today we will send the mail to them to if you need the download and keep that ah oh, okay or, uh, it... ah okay ma'am okay, okay. okay. we will send by mail ma'am oh, at yes. like the link is sent it by mail hmm. Okay. Good. Okay, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. Ah, okay. Thank okay, you. So tomorrow, sir, nine o'clock, ma'am. So you should ask us. Okay. Okay. Talk in little early. Today some classes are there, so lot of tasks are not there for our winner. I think so. Tomorrow, I think all will be done. This conference is no longer being recorded. Maybe that is there. Ah. This conference will now be recorded. Students mark attendance and uh, they can come here. This conference is no longer being recorded. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.